On July 24th of 2011, the police would find human remains in an alligator-infested swamp. It was unclear as to what happened, but it was very clear that they knew who it was. This is the unsettling case of Laura Ackerson. Hello friend, and welcome back to High Time Crime. My name's Joel, and on here I specialize in true crime, and also specific water brands. Stay away from tap. But today we're looking at the case of Laura Ackerson, and you're going to learn a lot, so buckle up. Our story takes place in a few different areas, but begins in North Carolina, and to be specific, we're gonna start in Kinston. Kinston is a city located in Lenore County, and as of 2020, it has a population of around 20,000 people. In 2009, the city won the All-America City Award, which marked the second time that they had won it. It's basically an award for community recognition in the United States, given by the National Civic League for being the best city. About two years later, that would all change. Laura Jean Ackerson was born on April April 30th of 1984 in Hastings, Michigan to Roger Ackerson and Brenda Ackerson. She was considered to be very bubbly and an all-around outgoing person. Not much is said about her early childhood, but at the age of 12 in 1996, her and her mother Brenda moved to Iowa because of a divorce that happened. Laura would then graduate from Linville Sully High School and then start going to Kirkwood Community College. It seems like there was a pretty big disconnect between her and her family and her older friends, and this was probably because she spent a lot of her early childhood moving around, but she did stay in contact with her brother Jason. So by herself, she moved to North Carolina to start fresh and began going to J.Y. Monk Real Estate School. Laura began working in the marketing industry and graphic design, and this is where her interests lied, and she became very, very good at it. When she got to Raleigh, which is an area in North Carolina, she made a few friends, and specifically a business partner named Siobhan Maffs and a newfound best friend, Heidi Schumacher. Laura and Heidi became best friends and told each other pretty much everything, but there was one thing that Laura kept a secret from everyone. That was the excuse for a man that she had started a relationship with. Sometime in March of 2007, while Laura was working in a restaurant trying to get herself into the business world, she met Grant Ruffin Hayes. Grant was a musician who played in bars around Raleigh, and he was also using drugs very frequently. The people that knew him said he was prone to alcohol outbursts of violence and held paranoid fantasies that the government and aliens were out to get him. Sounds like a stable person. But Grant would treat Laura horribly. He was very abusive and he would constantly cheat on her. He would make songs for her that were about taking her life and just about how he genuinely felt about her. One of those songs name was Broomstick Rider. In it, Grant says, I put a price tag on your head and my bullets will get you soon, indicating some of the plans that he had in mind. A few months after Laura and Grant had gotten together, they got married. Once again, Laura didn't tell anyone about her secret relationship, and so Heidi came home from being out of town and was shocked when Laura decided to spill the beans. Not only did she have a guy in her life that she wasn't talking about, but she secretly got married without letting anyone know. Everyone around Laura knew that this was a horrible idea, but decided to support her anyway. A few months would pass and Laura would find out that she was pregnant and she became ecstatic about this. Grant, on the other hand, was not. In fact, it's probably safe to say that he hated the idea. He was already pretty mysterious and didn't like to talk to anyone around Laura, but it got much worse when she became pregnant. Grant started to become much more controlling over who she was allowed to talk to or even see. Soon, Laura would have her first baby, who was a boy named Grant after his father. Once little Grant was born, Grant became even more controlling and started telling Laura that everyone around her was a bad influence. She had to start talking and seeing her family and her friends behind Grant back. Grant started to use drugs and started to drink much more heavily, and he started cheating on Laura, and his state of mind just really went downhill. He was convinced that he was the chosen one and that he had to make enough money to get onto a spaceship after the world ended. Grant had a decent amount of connections due to playing music in a ton of different venues, and one of those connections hit him up about job opportunities in the Virgin Islands. He immediately took the risk and decided to leave Laura and little Grant behind to go to the Virgin Islands to see what everything was all about. While Grant was there, he met a former actress named Amanda Perry Tucker. She was from Texas and had landed a few small parts in some movies and TV shows a few years prior. Grant started to talk to Laura about Amanda and how she looked and just inappropriate things to try and purposefully make Laura jealous. He would rub it in her face about how he cheated on her and had Amanda in his pockets. Laura was getting fed up with the BS that she was taking and so she decided she was going to leave Grant. Even Grant's family was telling Laura to run as fast as she could because every 
everyone around him could see right through the facade. But then Lara found out some pretty bad, but at the same time wonderful news. She was pregnant with another baby boy. At this point, she felt like she had to try and stay with him and hopefully make things work. Lara decided to move down to the Virgin Islands with little Grant to be with Grant. Their second son, Gentle, was then born, but he had a decent amount of health issues, and so collectively the family decided to move back to North Carolina. Grant was very angry about this because he felt like he lost a ton of opportunity, and so when they got back, he started drinking and using drugs more heavily than he ever has. Amanda would also end up moving to New York from the Virgin Islands, and her and Grant would stay in contact. Grant really started rubbing it in Lara's face that he was interested in Amanda. Him and Amanda would talk on the phone while Lara was in the room, and he would tell Amanda how much he wanted to marry her and how much he loved her. In 2010, Grant then decided to go up to New York to be with Amanda, and he left Lara behind with their two children. He loved it in New York because he said the opportunities were great, and he asked Lara if he could take little Grant to New York for a photo shoot, and that he'd return him almost immediately. Lara was very hesitant, but she decided to do it anyway because she didn't want her children to grow up without a father. Grant took little Grant to New York, and they did the photo shoot, but they didn't return him for a long time. Lara got on Facebook a few days later and saw a bunch of photos showing that Grant had gotten married to Amanda. Lara became incredibly distraught over this and asked how he could marry someone else. Grant then told her something that was incredibly shocking. He said to her, We've never been married and I never signed the documents. So Lara went and got their marriage certificate and looked down at where Grant was supposed to sign and there was no signature. From the time that they started dating, Grant was lying and manipulating her in so many different ways that he even went through with faking a marriage. Due to this happening, Lara was scared of even trying to get little Grant back because there were no custody agreements between them because she thought they were married. Soon, Lara would get even more bad news when Grant and Amanda decided to file for emergency custody of little Grant and Gentle at a hearing that Lara wasn't present at. She wasn't there because she wasn't aware that it was going on, and so Grant told the court that she was mentally unfit to be a parent, and so the court granted custody of both children to Grant. Then about 30 days later, an actual trial took place, and due to the fact that Lara didn't have a stable job or house because she was watching the kids full time and worrying about Grant, the court found her unfit to be a parent. But Lara wasn't going to easily back down and decided to bring forth evidence that showed that Grant was a sociopath and mentally unstable. So the court ordered them to both have mental psych exams, which Grant had to pay for. And the court also said that Lara was allowed to have the boys on the weekends and talk to them every day on the phone. But every time she tried to call the boys, the phone call ended up getting ruined by either Grant or Amanda, and soon Amanda would find out that she was pregnant. At this period of time, things started to become much more heated, and Lara had told her friends, and specifically Heidi, that if anything were to ever happen to her, it was Grant. Soon the psych evaluation would be completed, and it was found that Lara was a great mom who the boys loved and had a bond with. While Grant didn't have any bond with the children, and the evaluator said that he was mentally disturbed and needed a full evaluation done. Amanda would have her baby around this time on June 9th of 2011, which was a girl they named Lillian. On June 16th of 2011, Grant put out a video on YouTube welcoming their new baby girl into the world with a song. The court then ordered Laura and Grant to have a 3-2 schedule where one parent gets the child for three days and one parent for two days, and then they switch off doing the same thing. All of this made Grant incredibly angry, and soon things would really take a turn for the worse. On July 13th of 2011, Laura Ackerson would disappear. She was supposed to meet one of her friends and Carrie later in the day, but she never showed up. It took five days until she was reported missing on the 18th of July. The police knew almost immediately about where she was going and who she was going to meet because Siobhan had told them that Laura told her where she was going. She said that Laura said that she was going to meet Grant and their boys at his apartment on the 13th. So two days later on the 20th of July, the police went to Grant's apartment to investigate and there were a lot of things out of the ordinary. There was a strong smell of bleach and several patches that were bleached on the floor. A ton of items were missing from the apartment like the shower curtain and the vacuum cleaner, and there were several rugs gone. The police also found a piece of paper with the lyrics to a new song that Grant was working on titled 
man killer. The song was about the first person murder of a woman by strangulation and somehow making her bleed. The police discovered a note that was supposedly signed by Laura that said she agreed to give up custody of the boys in exchange for $25,000. But it was obvious that Laura would never do that because her boys to her were priceless. The police then started to investigate where Grant and Amanda had been the days that followed Laura's disappearance. They learned that shortly after Laura disappeared on the 13th of July, Amanda Hayes visited a local Chick-fil-A. They also found out that in the early hours of the 14th, Grant had went to Walmart and a Target in Raleigh. He bought goggles, trash bags, a reciprocating saw, blades, plastic sheeting, a tarp, gloves, bleach, tape, and a lint roller. And that same morning, Amanda called her daughter, who's a bit older named Shaw, and asked her if she could watch the boys that day. Shaw took them to a play center and was there for a majority of the day. Two days later, on July 16th, Grant bought a bunch of ice and some coolers and rented a U-Haul trailer, and he told the rental company that he was going to Texas. Amanda told Shaw that she was going to Texas to see her sister Karen Barry. Then Grant, Amanda, and the two boys drove to Texas and arrived sometime during the early morning of the 19th. It's pretty sad to know that the boys had no idea that their mother's lifeless body was directly behind them in a U-Haul trailer. It's just terrible. The next day on the 19th, Grant went to a Home Depot in Texas and bought gloves and a bunch of bottles of acid. A few days later, the police went to Texas and spoke to Karen, and she told them that on the night of the 19th that Grant and Amanda had asked if they could borrow her boat. Karen had lived very close to a creek that was infested with alligators, and they constantly went fishing there. The police obtained surveillance footage from the area, and it showed Amanda dumping some bottles of acid close to Karen's home. So they then searched the creek, and they found decomposing and dismembered body parts Parts, and it was very quickly confirmed that they were that of Laura Ackerson. Her official cause of death was determined to be homicide by undetermined means. Chief Deputy Brady told the Houston Chronicle that this was one of the most gruesome scenes that he has seen in 30 years of law enforcement. About two days later, on July 25th of 2011, Grant and Amanda Hayes were both charged with first-degree murder for the death of Laura Ackerson. One of the witnesses who went on stand was Shelton Barry, Amanda's nephew. He said that Amanda had asked if alligators were in the water and if they ate people. Grant and Amanda had separate trials and they both pleaded not guilty. But due to an overwhelming amount of evidence against them, they were both very easily convicted. Grant was found guilty of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And Amanda was convicted of second degree murder and was sentenced to 13 to 16 years in prison. Her defense attorneys argued that she had no idea about Laura's death until Grant had murdered her, but she helped him cover it up because she was afraid due to Grant threatening to kill her if she didn't help him dispose of Laura's body. Amanda was also convicted of tampering with evidence and given an extra 20 years behind bars in Texas, and so she'll be serving that right after she gets out, so it's safe to say she won't see daylight for a long time. A short period after this, Grant and Amanda ended up getting divorced. Now Laura's two boys, Grant and Gentle, live with her parents, and they're being well taken care of. Laura Jean Ackerson was a sweet and gentle woman who did nothing but love those around her. Her two boys specifically, and she was going to fight until the very end to try and ensure that they lived a good life. It's very sad to see that she got manipulated by a lying, conniving, awful excuse for a human, and I hope she's resting peacefully. As for these two losers, <laughs> Hope prison makes you rot. But anyways, thank you for watching this episode of High Time Crime. If true crime is your thing, then please subscribe and hit the like button because that's all we do. I also have a second account with my brother named Horrifying where we tell stories about everything paranormal. This includes true crime, mysteries, and things that are just downright spooky. I'd greatly appreciate if you subscribe to that too. The link's in my bio. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, friend.